Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to go through my top 10 must-have watercolor brushes for realism and realistic painting. Obviously everybody has different preferences, but these are the brushes that I find myself grabbing for the most. I'll include links for each brush in the description box below so you can find them if you want to try them for yourself. I'm not sponsored by any of these brands and all of these brushes were purchased with my own money. These are in no particular order because I use certain brushes for certain purposes. Alright, let's jump into it. This is the Mimic Creative Mark brush set. I was turned on to this brush set by the Frugal Crafter and I'm so glad I found them. I mention these as a set because I'm almost certain that you cannot buy them individually, but for around $30 for the set on Amazon, you can't go wrong for five brushes. These brushes are synthetic squirrel, but they perform just like real hair. They're thirsty and flexible, and I particularly love the round brushes because of their sharp tips. I tend to use more smaller brushes because I'm a detail painter, so my favorites in this set are the two, four, and eight. I love the 8 because it holds a ton of water and can be used for medium sized washes and fine details alike. I would recommend this set for anyone, especially those on a budget because of the versatility alone. This is the Princeton Velvet Touch No. 8 Long Round Brush and this brush is an absolute staple for me. This brush is as versatile as they come and it is a workhorse. I rely on this brush for detail work, for washes, glazing, texturizing, creating petals, and so much more. This brush can take a beating in a wash basin or in a palette of dried pans. It comes to a razor sharp point when it's wet and you can use it to obtain really nice fine details without having to switch to a smaller brush. This brush is made with a synthetic fiber, it has a brass ferrule, and it has a nice long wooden handle. It's really nice and comfortable to use. This brush can be found at Michael's and is a bit pricier at about $23, but in my opinion, it's like having two or three brushes in one and it's worth the extra cost. If I could only have one brush, I would probably choose this one. This is the Royal and Langnickel Jumbo Number no. 30 Flat Brush. This is another staple for me. I do a lot of full sheet paintings that require large washes and this is my go-to for just that. It's great for wetting your paper and laying down color and even getting sharp lines with its flat top. I also use this brush to sweep eraser bits or masking fluid nubs off of my paper instead of using my hand. It's really handy for that. This brush is made from synthetic Taclon fiber, but surprisingly, it's quite thirsty for being Taclon. It has a nice solid nickel plated brass ferrule and it feels really sturdy. It holds up really well to water. It's about $25 at Michael's and I think that's pretty affordable considering its size. This is the Windsor & Newton Galleria No. 1 Round Brush. This brush is really great for fine details. You'll notice these small brushes as a common theme for me. I love this brush because of how stiff it is. It holds quite a bit of paint for its size, which is really great for not having to dip into the palette as often. It comes to a nice point, and because of its snap, it is a great brush for lifting out details. This brush is specifically designed for acrylic paint and is made from a mix of synthetic filaments that are meant to lay down thick layers of color. This is what makes it great for watercolor. It will hold more paint than other brushes of this size. The filaments also tend to be more durable than synthetic fibers and can really stand up to scrubbing on paper. It also stands up to a wash basin and picking up paint in a palette. You can find this brush at Michael's or at Blix for around $10 to $15. I found it on Amazon, but it was quite expensive there. Jackson's may have it as well. I'll link to it on Amazon below so you can see the specs and look for it where it's cheaper. This is the Princeton Neptune No. 10 Round Brush. 
Princeton Neptune brushes are well trusted among watercolor artists and for good reason. They're fantastic brushes. They're super thirsty, they have nice sharp points, and they're durable when it comes to paper, palettes, and cleaning. I love this brush for when I work wet and wet because for some reason I can really control the amount of paint and water so easily. I find this brush to be the Goldilocks of brushes when it comes to floppy versus snap. As a detail painter, I don't love a super floppy brush and I find this one specifically to be the perfect stiffness for wet and wet painting. This brush is made from synthetic squirrel, but you would never know because of the amount of water it holds. This brush can hit around $20 and can be found on Amazon, at Blix, or at Jackson's. This is the Artist Loft 5.8 Tight Detail Brush. The function is in the name for this one. At just about $5, this is a super budget-friendly detail brush, and the performance far outweighs the price. This is a weird little brush. It has a short handle and the bristles are made from synthetic filaments that make the brush almost feel like it has a felt tip, like a marker. This brush is mainly made for things like miniatures, nail art, and models, but it works really well with watercolor, especially milkier mixes. The felt tip-like quality allows for precision and detail in even the tiniest of spots. I highly recommend this brush for anyone who paints detail work. You can find it at Michael's. All right, this one is kind of extra. This is the Windsor Newton Series 7 Number 3 Round Brush. This is one of my favorite and most used brushes, and rightfully so. Series 7 brushes are the Cadillacs of watercolor brushes. They are the most popular sable brush there is. However, I do feel their popularity is dwindling as most people look for alternatives to real animal hair. This brush does live up to its reputation. It's versatile, it's thirsty, and it's reliable. I use this brush most I use this brush mostly for pet portraits because it's great for building up texture. At about $20, it is a splurge, but one you won't be disappointed with. This is the Da Vinci's Series Forte number 0 round brush. You will see this brush in so many of my videos. This is another staple for me. This is my favorite little detail brush and mainly because it really holds up to the palette and paper. It's semi-stiff but flexible enough to get soft lines with a light hand. This brush is made from synthetic fibers but they mimic natural hair to a T. This is another thirsty little brush for its size and really minimizes the amount of time I have to spend moving back and forth between the palette. This brush can be found on Amazon for about 10 bucks. This is the Escada Versatile Number no. 1 Round Brush. I think a lot of people associate Escada with high prices, and yes, some of them can be very pricey, but at a moderate $8, this brush is one of the best detail brushes you can have. I particularly love this brush for painting fur and hair because of its stiffness, snap, and somewhat curved edge. It's really excellent for building texture and for scrubbing and lifting paint in small places. I use this brush to scrumble and stipple and to build texture in so many ways. This brush is made from a synthetic alternative to Kalinsky Sable and versatility really is its main feature. You can't go wrong here. Okay, this brush is kind of a one-off, but it is one of the best brushes I have. I bought it at a small art store in New York City. It was in a little cup next to the register for like three bucks. This is a short-handled liner brush. It's super fine and the bristles are on the longer side. I don't have a brand name or a brush name. The only thing I can tell you is that it was made in Sri Lanka and the number on the handle indicates 20 slash zero. I use this brush for painting hair and fur in pet portraits. I have painted entire pieces with this little guy. I've scoured the internet looking for the exact brush and haven't had any luck, but I did find some similarly shaped brushes on Amazon and I've linked them in the description box below. All right, that's it. These are my top 10 absolute must have watercolor brushes. I hope you found this video helpful. If any of these brushes fall in your top 10, let me know in the comments below. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!